What's going on everyone? Austin John please here and tonight it's gonna to be time to take down Charizard with the mightiest mark 7 star raid in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> Here we are about a year and a half since the launch of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And now we're faced with the same raid that we had as soon as the game launched. Now, if you didn't get the game on release day, then you may have not actually had the availability to get yourself Charizard with the Mightiest Mark. This is the third of three first partner Pokemon originally discovered in the Kanto region that are celebrated for Pokemon Day 2024. So I know not everyone makes it to the end of the video, uh, so I'm just going to throw this in now. There are some differences between how this Charizard plays and the previous Mightiest Mark Charizard if you do want to farm this event up. While I don't have the information on what his original HP multiplier is, I feel like this Charizard has more health than it did when the game first came out because I have to do more attacks. This isn't going to be the exact same flow as it was when the game first came out and you first did the Mightiest Mark Charizard. It's slightly different, but generally the same. Even if you're victorious in the Terra Ray battle, you won't be able to catch the Terra Pokemon. Brand new event, Charizard with the Mightiest Mark. This is coded to be a new and unique event. So level 100, solar power, modest, six IV, flawless, Default size, 25 times HP multiplier, Dragon Pulse, Fire Blast, Hurricane, Focus Blast, Shield activation and 65% of HP or 55% of time, Overheat at the beginning, Reset their set stats right at the beginning, Reset player stats at 70%, Terra Blast at 50%, which is a Dragon type, Sunny Day at 40%, Inferno at 20%. Only change to this whatsoever is there's now a 3% drop chance of all five Herba Mystica, just like the other Kanto first partner Pokemon. So I'm going to be going through the strategies that I have on two builds with Azumarill and Fluttermane on how those are going to be playing out for Mightiest Mark Charizard. The reason I'm doing these two is because Fluttermane is the safest bet, but if for whatever reason you don't have a Fluttermane or it's in home and you don't want to take it out, everyone can get access to an Azumarill. The Fluttermane build I have done as little as 9 turns, as much as 13 turns. Azumarill I have done as little as 8 turns, but as much as 10 turns. And it all has to do with if your attacks miss, his attacks miss, you get confused if he does random double moves toward the end of the battle and if those are going to be hitting you, if they're going to be dragon moves, and if Inferno hits you at his 20% mark, basically it's all just a whole bunch of coin flips just like Pokemon. Fluttermane is going to be holding a Covert Cloak, that way we don't get confused by Hurricane. It's going to be having the moves Moonblast, Calm Mind, Fake Tears, and Draining Kiss. Its stats are going to be full special attack and special defense, with a modest nature to increase our power of special attack and decrease our physical attack. Azumarill is going to be Terra type Fairy, so it's going to be changed. It's going to be holding a Shell Bell, that way you can recover when it does damage. It's going to be having the moves Play Rough, Belly Drum, Light Scream, and another move, which I just threw Helping Hand in here because if you're playing online, Helping Hand is going to be the best move that you can use. As far as stats, we have max attack and max HP. The reason I recommend the Fluttermane one over the Azumarill one is because it's just cleaner and there's no chance I'm being confused. With the Azumarill one, there's a slight chance I'm being confused and it might not be a 9 turn, it might be a 10 turn, or you might lose and also requires being knocked out once. So he's gonna start with the Overheat, right? He only does it on one Pokemon. First turn, we're gonna be doing a Calm Mine. Oh, Drifling with the Will-O-Wisp. That's gonna be super helpful with the Special Attacker. Second turn, we're gonna be doing another Calm Mine. That's gonna be increasing our Special Attack and Special Defense. After two Calm Mines, we're gonna be going for a Draining Kiss now. We're doing okay-ish damage. After our third draining kiss in a row, he's now going to reset our stats. So now our special defense is not bolstered. Charizard the Unrivaled. He, he set up his shield. From here, we're gonna be going for a Calm Mine and a second Calm Mine. From here, we can Terrastalize, and if we're low on health, we're going for draining kiss, which we're kind of a little low on health. Now, you may have been in a situation that if your partners were doing more damage, that when you went to go for Draining Kiss number four and five, he reset your stats at some point. 
when he resets your stats, you're going to be doing those two combines. Whether it's at the beginning or at the end, whenever it is, just do those two combines then. Since we're okay on health, I'm going to be switching to Moonblast instead of Draining Kiss. Oh, here's his scripted Terror Blast Dragon. And that does, you know, zero to us because we're a fairy type. Here's our sunny day. Now, because we're a flutter main, that's going to activate our protosynthesis, which is going to increase our special attack. Use your judgment. If you're below half health, do draining kiss. If you're above half health, you're going to be doing moon blast. Now, if you're going to be doing this event and farming it up, going through this, it's going to be very fast. Using Fluttermane, it's going to be very safe. You're going to be able to choose when you want to heal yourself up. This is actually the slowest it's been. 13 turns in total. I got Ability Capsule, which you're going to be getting on your first clear. And then Sour Herba Mystica, fantastic 3% chance at all of them. Uh, and then just some other fun stuff in here. Cool. Now this Fluttermane build is a lot safer lot less chance that you can accidentally be knocked out because there's always the random chance that you're going to be confused. I swear, the middle of a palmy group always, always freaks me out. If all you're going for is speed and, you know, you're a little bit more experienced, then an Azumarill build might be better for you. He's gonna go off, he's gonna be doing his random move. Turn one, we're gonna do a light screen because we want to focus on defense and longevity right now. Fire Blast, and we're gonna eat that. That did 80 damage. Not even concerned. Here's the light screen. Now turn two, three, and four, we're gonna be doing three play roughs. Number one objective of this. Oh, I missed. Okay, yeah, that can happen. Number one objective of this is build up your terror charge. From here, he's most likely going to be at the point that he's going to nullify your stats. And he also hit us with a Fire Blast, and that did not do anything. We're good. He set up the shield. But that's fine because we already because we already got three play roughs off. On this turn, our light screen is gone and our ability is nullified. So we're gonna go ahead and do a light screen because we want to bolster our defenses once again. And as long as you haven't been hit consistently and you're in the red or half health, you should be able to do this and live it. Lived it. That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying that this is much riskier of a play. From here, once you get that belly drum off, we're gonna go ahead and terastalize and use play rough. Now, if you're not at a point that you're going to be able to live a belly drum, you want to throw. You want to go ahead, use helping hand on your teammates. You want to basically get knocked out. That way you can come back with your light screen fully intact and do that huge chunk of damage. From here, sun's going to go up. Sunlight turned harsh. Hurricane ate it no problem. And then the follow up terror blast, which we don't get hit with because we're immune and follow up play rough. We're gonna eat that fire blast. Oh, that actually did a good amount of damage. Follow up Inferno, that missed. He got another random fire blast off and knocked us out. We're back now and uh, we sh do, do I even need to use Belly Drum or can I just use Play Rough and we win? Oh, of course I miss. We're gonna hit this time. Yeah, great, okay, perfect. We randomly got knocked out once. We had a series of him missing and us missing. Didn't have to throw like we used to have to do. And it still ended up being nine turns. And I got three Herbamiscas and an ability patch. That's nice. There you go, there's Charizard with the Mightiest Mark, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, our first, well, technically our second raid. The first one was at EV1, which kind of sucked. We're not gonna talk about that. First! Mightiest Mark Raid. And then here we are celebrating it for Pokemon Day 2024. Who knows what it's gonna be? This is going on for another week. Farm up that Herba if you want. And honestly, if you have a good strategy for this, probably never update your game ever. And if you did complete this, maybe go online, help some other people. Great. Who knows what the next raid is gonna be? We're just gonna have to wait and see. Thank you so much for being here. If you found this helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin China. Man, they see me shining like I got the charm. Stay strapped, got that jet ball in my palm. Felt from the sky, guess I'm the chosen one. And if you need to know how, check out Austin John. Champion flow, flow, yeah. I got that champion flow, flow.